you can see in just looking at it how close they are. They were very, very close. They did everything together, which was very uh, troubling when Nicole passed. In 2013, Brian Cade's 15-year-old daughter took her own life. A year and a half later, his younger daughter attempted suicide. She was unable to really process the death of her sister. She kept it inside. Residential treatment was denied. A less intensive level of care was approved. The hospital said what that translates to is your daughter has not failed often enough to get a longer-term treatment center. So she has to have attempted suicide yes. several times, each time rolling the dice, because right. it might actually succeed. That's correct. After a second suicide attempt, she was approved for residential care. After three weeks there, the clinical staff described an increase in suicidal ideation and that she clearly met criteria to continue treatment there. But just days later, the insurer, United Behavioral Health, part of United Health Group, wrote, the services asked for are not medically needed. They were basically uh, protecting their profitability. Cato could only afford another three weeks. It takes time, and because she didn't have that time, she went back into a withdrawal situation. My son was homeless three different times because he was discharged from the hospital and there was no program for him to go into. Sylvia Taws has kept a meticulous record of her son's mental illness and her efforts to get his treatments covered. Nine of 10 times you're getting denied the kind of care that you know your loved one requires. He has schizoaffective disorder, diagnosed in his teens, and has been hospitalized more than a dozen times. This is one of the more historic farms. He now works with Taws and her husband on the family's organic farm. They have depleted their retirement savings, paying for his mental health care. But they have issued coverage through tomorrow. Taws played us this 2016 voicemail from a care coordinator discussing how many more days would be covered at a residential care facility. If his, uh, his symptoms have worsened, um, and, um, you know, that was the reason... Let me just... Yeah. If his symptoms have worsened, they're letting you know the only chance of greater care is if your child's symptoms get worse. And then you end up where you're oddly, slightly hoping that something worsens. Another thing is maybe getting Medicaid for him or so a Medicaid plan. You hear the suggestion that your son get Medicaid yes. from the United Healthcare people. Yep. And why should this be schlepped off to taxpayers? There shouldn't be the lobbying. It should be there's a diagnosis, this requires long-term care. A class action lawsuit claimed patients were illegally denied benefits based on United Behavioral Health's internal guidelines. Attorney Mehram Bendat is co-counsel for the plaintiffs. Well, you're the managed care reviewer and I'm the patient or the provider. I could protest all I want and you could always hold up your guidelines and say, look, you just don't meet these criteria. But what if the criteria themselves are just flagrantly off base? And you think they are? Well, I, I don't think so. The court thought so. Earlier this year, the federal court ruled against UBH and called the guidelines flawed, unreasonable, and more restrictive than generally accepted standards of care, and that financial incentives infected the guideline development process. And there's thousands of families in our situation, and they eventually give up. There's no more money to fund care. Taw says her son is now stable and living with them. Kata's daughter left that residential facility in 2017, and now they have very little contact. It's my belief that she blames me for the loss of her sister. Where does that leave you? It leaves me the, with the sensation that I have really lost both daughters. United Behavioral Health told CBS News, we want our members to have the mental health support they need when they need it. The company says it is revising guidelines to be more in line with the way practicing clinicians actually determine the level of care a patient needs. Dr. John LaFouque, CBS News, New York.